sounds like we might actually be starting now. It's been, uh, it's been 30 minutes. I hear people cheering now. If, if, yeah, if, if the album was going to release, like, this is going to be the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Start 15 minutes ago. I have to pee. I can't. Because what if it starts while I'm peeing? Guys! Guys! The text is gone! Oh my god! Ah! 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 my back on Pepsi Wall. Never call on yo, never count on yo, always count on God. He's got miracles on me. He's got miracles on me. Who is that? He's got miracles on me. Something happened. He's got miracles on me. Nothing. He's got miracles on me. Yes, the best song ever. Never thought I'd see the day. July 24th, 2020. The first of four release dates planned for this album. That was over a year ago. Almost a year out from when we were initially anticipating this album. We have it. We're able to listen to it as much as we want. Barring the fact that this may not even be the final version of the album or it wasn't even supposed to be released according to Kanye's Instagram. It's a tough situation. It never is clear cut with Kanye. I mean, unless you're talking about like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy or that's, that's it basically. And clear cut applies to the music and the antics and the controversies, which there have ended up being numerous with this album. I don't know how to approach this re re review. It, this album is almost two hours if you include the bonus tracks. It's his longest album, technically. And it covers a lot of ground in a lot of time. I don't know what to make of it. It, it essentially, it is like trying to pull, like, I mean, you, you can tell, like, obviously it's about his mother. Obviously it's about his faith in God. Obviously it's about his relationship with Kim Kardashian. Whatever sort of relationship they still have or don't have at this point. They've made it very confusing based off of just the ending of that third listening party. What we do have, what we can parse something from is just the music itself. And I think that is probably the best way to enjoy this album is to ignore the fact that a lot of it is super baffling. There are creative decisions which make little to no sense. Um, I don't know if, if you're not aware, it sends, every curse word is censored. And that doesn't mean like, oh, they, they don't write verses with swearing. No, there are there are verses that were written and they were performed with swearing and then they're just bleeped out. And we know this because during the listening parties they played uncensored versions of the songs, which is disappointing to say the least. Um, we have seen some rumors of a Donda Deluxe or a second version of Donda. So maybe those verses will not be censored come that version, or maybe they will, who knows. Apparently the Andre 3000 song, Life of the Party, that was leaked by Drake, if I don't want to even get into most of this stuff, if that sounds insane to you that a Andre 3000 feature on a Kanye song was leaked by Drake, just, just look into it. He couldn't put his song on the album because there wasn't any swearing, because he wanted it to be there with, he didn't want it to be censored. There's that, but honestly that isn't, that is one of the least baffling creative decisions about this album in the first place. And I am uh, not kidding. If you're unaware, um, there are songs in the here. One song in particular, um, I'm sure you know, if you've listened to television, it's a, it's, 
the best way to describe it would be an interlude, but I mean, it's not like marketed at that, marketed as that, it doesn't label itself as an interlude track, but it's a two minute, almost two minute song that is based off of a very, very simple piano loop and then has poorly mixed or low quality pop smoke vocals overlaid that and um, there's not a verse, it's just one one phrase, we made it. During the listening parties, there was a word before that, that um, my lack of melanin doesn't allow me to say. Maybe Kanye didn't want it to be on the album, and that's the whole UMG releasing it early thing. I'm just gonna start talking about the tracks, okay? There are clearly very stupid things about this album. But, um, spoiler alert, this is gonna be a mostly positive review because I actually really do love a lot of, if not most, of the songs we have here. So, first track, Don to Chant. One minute long. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, cool intro track. Um, sort of sets you in the mood, you know, very meditative, very spiritual. I think it's a good, it's a good way to intro, introduce us to the headspace he's in. Um, I don't know how well it segues into the next song, Jail. Which is also a song I also like, but I don't know how how I think about the like because they, they both seem very different tones. People have pointed out that the da 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 fits with the danda danda of the chant, and oh, I do actually find that like an interesting sort of way to, to look at it. But I think it's more like narrative reasons. Jail is at the end of the album. Um, but anyways, Jail features a Jay Z feature. The first listening party when they played that, uh, I remember I went crazy. Um, and the Jay-Z feature is, people complain that it's, like, low energy. I actually think it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I think he's doing a lot of cool things um, with what he's saying. And um, I, I think it's a pretty entertaining song. I, I like, like, all the effects on Kanye's voice and how that contrasts with, like, Jay's very laid-back um, delivery. Um, you know, I really like the song. People are, like, confused with the lack of drums, but I, I, I wouldn't want them to be there. I like the, the beat switch at the end. You know, I think it's a really, I think it's a really smart, clever song. Um, that, you know, I feel like has a lot of playability. Find it. I think it's a really good intro track. Um, neglecting maybe the fact that it doesn't mesh very well with um, Donna Chant. The next song, God Breathed. Um, I actually really like this song as well. People aren't as crazy about it, but um, I really find like the, like the ethereal, ambient, low-key nature. It kind of reminds me of like I Am A God in that sense. And I love that song. I love Jesus. Um, in general, and that sort of reminded me of that. People think it's like strung out, but I mean, they must, they probably haven't listened to Say You Will. Because, I mean, I, I think Kanye does it really well, just creating these sort of like more atmospheric tracks. I think this works really well as a song to, like, I guess, sort of bring us more into the emotion. Then that transitions to Off the Grid, which is crazy, crazy banger. Um, Playboy Cardi is also on that song, Kanye is also on that song, and Vivio or Fivio. Um, his verse is killer. All three of them, the fact that like, it transitions to like a drill beat, it's awesome. I think it's probably the hardest hitting song in like the like aggressive sort of sense. Um, I believe that's true. But anyways, great song again. I, I think for right now we're like four for four in terms of tracks. Like these have all been awesome. Then fifth song, Hurricane. We've been waiting years for this. This song is, um, I, I do have to admit, I think I feel like I fell in love with the OG leaked versions we had, and I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get like the original sample on this version of the track. But I think it's still a phenomenal song regardless. The Weeknd is amazing. Um, Little Baby, I don't know much about him, but I really like his verse on here. Kanye's verse is pretty awesome. I, I do prefer the OG verse, but whatever. Um, I think it's a really creative, really strange mood it puts you in, but um, I think it is a beautiful song, so... I mean, there's that. It's awesome. It does kind of feel like that is one instance where, um, and I feel like this has kind of been a recurring theme so far, but like features have been very, very prominent on this album. And I don't really take much of a problem with that, but um, I, it is, there are points where I would like, where I would think it would be even better if there was more Kanye. And that's, and Hurricane might be one of those points, maybe just another verse, or maybe just a longer verse. I don't know. Who knows? Anyways, next song, Praise God. This song's pretty awesome too. Um, I love I love the Donda sample in that Into the Night. Uh, I love 
I, I, I wasn't as sold on this, but the, I actually have grown to like like the Baby Keem feature on here. Um, I've actually listened to his new album, and I've uh, been pleasantly surprised. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did. But um, Baby Keem's good on this track. Travis Scott is good on this track. Um, I, don't, I think it is. I think it is very evocative of a mood so far. And I think yes, yeah, again, this these first strings of tracks like there are no low points if I'm being honest, and uh, and Praise God leads into another great track, Jonia. I know people aren't as crazy about this, but like the emotion behind the song, Vori is doing the, the auto-tuned vocals. I just love the way, like it's, his voice is so manipulated. Like that, whatever they're doing there to create that hook is super interesting to me. Um, and, I, and I think it just like makes it like so easy to like vibe out, you know? And then like the verses on this are so emotional. I know the song's about like, a artist that was, I believe, killed in gun violence, and that the songs like verses sort of reflect that. I thought that really um, touching, very emotional. And I, I think again, I think I think so far, like I'm not gonna count down a chance, more of an intro. But I think like um, it's six for six. These first six songs were all great. I wouldn't cut any of them. Um, then Jonah moves into OK OK, and OK OK is probably like the first song where I know a lot of people love this song and that's the thing like I feel like I've asked a lot of people about this album and they each have given me different answers for like their favorite tracks and I think okay okay might be the first track I would understandably cut um but I think it's still great um I do I do actually like that hook it is kind of like cheesy um like kind of simple but I do I do find it interesting I do find kind of find the samples there cool I mean it's kind of you know maybe a lull on the track list so far but I mean, I can understand why it was put on the album. Um, next song, Junior, is probably, besides television, probably the probably my least favorite song, but I do like Playboy Cardi, so I like that he's on here. And um, I don't know. It feels, it feels like, too simple. It, it, it doesn't feel like it makes much progress. Like, I don't feel like there's much development. Um, I know it's supposed to be, like, a, a diss, apparently, um, the Junior Not Want to Now Be On My Wrist. Um, apparently, one of Kanye's old friends built a watch for Drake, and that's sort of what it's hinting at. And I find that interesting, but um, I, don't know, I, think, I think the song could have probably used more work, in all honesty. Um, or just not be here. I, would, I wouldn't be hurt at all if someone decided to cut this song. I, I feel like there is like maybe a great song somewhere in here, but yeah, I would need a lot to be reworked. I do actually like the bass hits, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't I, I don't know. I feel like there more could have been done to make that song bigger. I'm not ex I'm not entirely sure what, but yeah, I feel like that there is list missed potential with that song. I wouldn't mind it being cut. Um, the tenth song, believe what I say. This song is incredible. This is like this is like the best pop song I've heard all year. It is I don't know. It was the, he did play. The, I remember the snippet that came out a year ago. Um, on Kanye's Twitter. That snippet is different than this, but it is still so good. And when I first heard of this during the listening party, I went like insane. And this song is so, the bass line is incredible. Like the sample is incredible. Um, the verses are awesome. The, the sort of like bridge section, I'm not entirely sure who's speaking during that. And then just how that like cuts out and then it gets back to the hook. I love this song so much. It's just phenomenal. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, it's probably my favorite song on the album, which is, you know, because I've liked most, if not all of the songs we've gotten up to this point. Uh, believe what I say, that was like the real, real keeper. Like, this is like one of Kanye's best songs, in my opinion. Okay. Now, um, next song, 24. Some people are, are like less sure about this song. I've heard like mixed feelings. Like, it's like people, some people say it's their favorite. Some people say like it's. Um, Half baked. I personally love this song. Uh, I loved it. I think this is my favorite s song coming out of the first listening party. But just the like this sort of like the sloppy way, like the organ is played at the end. I um, the way the the choir is pitch shifted down. I find that super interesting. I, I and it, just the emotion of what's being said. Like I mean, I'm not religious, but um, just like that that chant of like, God's not finished, God's not finished, we're gonna be okay. Like, it's so emotional, it's so, it's so captivating. It's so raw, it's so emotional. And uh, I, I just can't, I, I love this song. It's incredible. And then 
next track, Remote Control, which is a song with like very mixed emotions I've heard about it. I love this song probably even more than 24. Um, I know people say like the hook feels forced, the and maybe it's kind of like the the Vori hook on Jonah, but I just I, I love like just the, the way the auto tune sort of creates that trill. I don't know. I find it so like enamoring that that hook. I don't know. I love it. I personally love it. I know people don't like that, and I can understand why. But um, at the same time, I don't. <laughs> it, it's so playful. It's so mystique. Oh, on remote control, like a CEO. Oh, I love the Young Thug verse on here too. Um, <laughs> this the, you're not gonna believe me if if you haven't heard, but the glob go gab glob sample at the end <laughs> is so playful and funny. I did prefer on the second listening party when Kid Cudi was on the track, and I do find it a little ironic that he was cut. Um, for a meme feature, and not real, not really, because I mean the song is shortened. Um, but I also don't feel like I feel like people get overly disappointed when I talk about remote control and Cuddy's features cut, which, um, which I mean I understand, but I think it might have been because the next song on the album, Moon, also features Cuddy, and Moon again is a phenomenal track. Uh, it, I guess it kind of reminds me of um, Twenty Four and just like the the sort of like vocal interplay that feels like it's happening. But just like, um, oh, I can't, I can't remember his name. Let me, who sings the hook? I think it's Don Tolliver. Um, him, Cuddy, and Kanye. The way they sort of just meld at the end. Like, the hook is heavenly. Cuddy's verse is heavenly. And then when the three of them just sort of converge at the end, like, oh, it's so, like, ethereal. So beautiful. I love, like, how it kind of has, like, a callback, like, the similar melody to, I can float on the water of Hurricane. I will go to the moon. I love, I love the song. The song is, again, like... And if you're keeping track so far, most of these songs have been really good. There have been two songs where I'm iffy on, but then I have, like, most, if not the rest of the songs. I can maybe maybe see God Breathe being cut a little, but um, I think up to this point, like, most, if not all, the material has been pretty essential. Then, um, next track, Heaven and Hell is... Not different. I do enjoy this song. I, I feel like, I don't know, something about it, I feel like there is, like, a missed potential. I, I think it just might, the song might be too short. But um, I love this song as well. Uh, I do love the way it builds up in Cascades. And, yeah, it's a great track. Um, Donda is probably the mo one of the more baffling songs because the Listening Party version I enjoyed much more because I had the Pusha T and Kanye trading bars thing and an effect that was cut at the end makes the song almost feel like unfinished. It's not truly reaching its potential. I think that's one more interesting factor, like the listening part, because I'm sure there are like lots of features and production elements that are cut from plenty of other Kanye songs, and we have just been living in ignorance blissfully. Um, but I feel like the fact that the listening part, we got to see things that we got attached to, and then they were cut. I and mean, it also kind of is it's like almost an interesting statement on like the artistic... Um, or just on artistic creation in general, but, um, yeah, I did hurt that I was cut. I, I don't know, I, I personally feel like that should still be there, and the song maybe needs to be cooked a little more. I could, this is another song I could see being cut, as you know, especially notably, because it wasn't in the third listening party, if I remember correctly. Um, Keep My Spirit Alive, I, I've heard people who love and adore this track, but again, it's probably is one of the more mediocre songs in my mind. Um, I do, it is pretty emotional, I feel that emotion pretty well. But I feel I feel like more could be done. I feel like, I feel I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not I don't know if I can fully articulate it. I just feel like it's more just like a mediocre track overall. I, I, that's my main gripe is just that it doesn't reach the same high as some of these other songs. Then Juice's Lord, the other phenomenal track. I love Kanye and Electronica. J Electronica's verse on this. The the B like the fact that it's so static for so long. Like, you, you feel like it should, you know, bore you eventually, but I, I think just, like, the Jesus, Lord, just all of that is sort of just creates just, like, an atmosphere. I mean, this is a very ambient album, if you haven't pick, heard that yet, and I find that super interesting, just how it keeps you in that one emotion, in that one state, so for so long, and just all you have is the rapping to sort of, like, guide you along, and it, I, I just love it, I just adore the song. So good. Okay, new again. New again? 
I really love the intro to the song, the if you hit you with the WID, better not meet you with Jake. I, I love that, that interplay there. Um, and I do love just like the synths, like the, like they hit you so hard every single time. Oh, I feel like there, it does feel in a sense there is like a missed potential in parts of the song. And this is one where I could see people where I would personally want it to stay, but I could see people cutting it and I would be understanding of that decision. But yeah, I do like the song. Uh, I love just, you know, those synths. Uh, I heard the verse played over, um, like a remix video played over I Wonder, and I loved that. That was pretty awesome. But yeah, I just, feel, I just feel like almost like a graduation era type track in a few aspects. Um, not really, it doesn't really have drums. Like, the verse doesn't really fit with that era, but just the synths and, like, the way it's sort of, like, that a big arena sound. I thought that was interesting. Television... It's an interlude, it's an interlude. Just treat it like an interlude or just hit the skip button and you'll be fine. Lord, I need you. Another one of those songs I'm not that crazy about. I understand why people like it. I do like parts of it, but um, yeah, again, I'm not huge about it. Pretty interesting song overall though, a lot going on. But yeah, I feel like probably this isn't worthy of the of being on the actual album. Like, I, like they're, they're like interesting things to latch on to. Um, but I feel like, I feel like in the second half, he's like sort of just, I feel like some of these songs are running out of steam. Like they're not as interesting. And I can understand like Lord, I Need You being important because it's leading right into these next two songs, which are sort of like the ascension. And I guess I appreciate it in that sense, but I, don't know, I feel like these, this song is one song that could like, cause it's not like a super moving track. Like I feel like a lot of these songs before it have like are very moving or very atmospheric in an immediate mood and I feel like Lord I Need You just doesn't do that for me but whatever it's fine just considering what's coming next Pure Souls phenomenal track almost rivaled by the song that comes right after it but um, Pure Souls is ah, I love I love that hook I just love the ending like people people have complained about um, mixing at the end, they say like, "Oh, like it, like when it, when the organs start to clip, um, when that when there's that female voice, it's just I don't I don't remember who sings that, but she is really really good, and she just like sort of adds a cap on top of that song, and that ending where it's just swirling with those organs, like they're starting to crackle. I like I find that I find that interesting. I know some people might not, but I I really I really appreciate it. I find it interesting, and I love how it leads into right into. Um, the masterpiece song of this album, Come to Life, which when I watched that in the first time with the listening party, like, and he caught, he burned himself on fire. That was, that was insane. I like the piano and just the, the massive bass synth hints. This song is so good. It's, it's honestly one of his, I, people are saying it, saying it's like on par with like some of his greatest songs and I can't, I have to agree with them. Like it is so, it's not my favorite song on this record, but it is so, so good. And it's sort of, in a, in a sense, it kind of like redeems a lot of the lower points at this point in the record. And that leads into No Child Left Behind, the last song, not counting the bonus tracks. And this one, like, I, I was disappointed. I, I really loved the snippet when I heard this. Like, it was just so ethereal. And then when I heard the listening party, the fact that, like, it doesn't evolve from there. I was anticipating, like, it to evolve. I was anticipating, like, some sort of movement or, like, drums would come in or something would happen. But now I understand as of the outro track, like it just makes more sense as sort of being this ethereal. Um, I mean, the song really clicked when the second listening party hoist himself in the sky. But, um, but yeah, I think the song makes sense now. I think it's super chilling, incredible, very atmospheric, you know, feels like you're being ascended, very vibe worthy, you know. I think it's a good close for the album. Overall, um, I know this album, there are baffling decisions. There are like, really stupid things. I haven't gotten to Marilyn Manson and to Baby, which um, I, I don't know what to make of. I mean, most cynically, it is a very, very tasteless publicity stunt. And um, at its least cynical, um, it is a very complicated artistic statement, which is still probably pretty distasteful, considering the fact that Marilyn Manson is probably guilty. But I mean, those antics beside there are just so many good tracks here. There's so much good to be found. There's so many gems. And even if this isn't 
probably Kanye's least consistent album overall, I think it is going to be, I think with time it'll actually be regarded more favorably than it's being seen immediately. And I would love like a Donda Deluxe where they redo some of the things, they add in cursing, they rethink some of the track list, maybe cut a few songs, maybe add a few more that couldn't be added. Or just rethink a few things. And, and if that were the case, I, I could honestly see this being like a top three Kanye album. Like, there is there is a phenomenal, like, masterpiece here. But we did but what we did get is great. I love it. Um, 8.5 out of 10. Thank you. Don't tell the media that the media the motherfucking bitch. I'm telling my people that the Kanye West left the bitch. Right now. And she was on the side of the video game.